Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a 12-team PPR mock draft from the 11th overall spot using Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard, where we drafting up against the ESPN, NFL, and Sleeper ADP. The roster positions for today's mock are one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, flex kicker defense, and five bench spots. But before we could get on into this mock draft, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you're doing up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that that subscribe button down below and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on twitter or x please do so at notorious fntsy so without further ado let's get into this 12 team ppr mock draft from the 11th overall spot if you guys want my ppr rankings and cheat sheet they're available in the video description or in the pinned comment on my Patreon. So the draft begins here with Christian McCaffrey, followed by Brees Hall, CD Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Bijan Robinson, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross, St. Brown, AJ Brown, and Saquon Barkley. Very normal top eight, top nine picks, in my opinion. Now, the order of the picks, personally, I'm not taking Brees Hall ahead of CD or Tyreek Hill. But at the end of the day, that is a very normal start to fantasy football drafts this season. A.J. Brown at the 109 also feels pretty normal. At the 1.10, Saquon Barkley. Personally, I would be taking Garrett Wilson ahead of him. I would also take Jonathan Taylor and Jameer Gibbs ahead of Saquon Barkley. But they are all very close in my rankings. We're to go with Garrett Wilson here. Garrett Wilson, to me, feels like a layup pick here at the 1.11. Now, I get why a lot of people would say, Nick, Garrett Wilson is not a layup because Garrett Wilson hasn't put up a super consistent season yet despite his short NFL career. And I understand that if you drafted Garrett Wilson last year, you were probably feeling immense regret, right? The second Aaron Rodgers went down, you were feeling bad. Now, we thought... At least I thought that maybe things wouldn't be so terrible. Maybe Zach Wilson learned something from Aaron Rodgers. Maybe, just maybe, Garrett Wilson will be okay. Obviously, that wasn't the case. Garrett Wilson's production was stumbling and bumbling, mainly due to the touchdowns, I think, this year. Even if Aaron Rodgers is just like 70% of what he used to be, Garrett Wilson has the upside to be a top five wide receiver due to his great skill set. So I'm definitely Excited to take him at the 1.11. After Saquon Barkley, we see Garrett Wilson, followed by Puka Nakua, and then Travis Kelsey. Now, I personally believe that Travis Kelsey is a reach at the 2.01. Why do I think that? Because Travis Kelsey typically goes at the end of the second round. Now, I know in years prior, you had to take the tight end number one in the first round or the early second round, but this year... There are going to be leagues where you're able to get Travis Kelsey or Sam Laporta in the early third round. So at the 2.1, I personally think that is too rich of a price for me to pay. Now, the top running back over here on Fantasy Pros has Jameer Gibbs, but I have Jonathan Taylor ranked ahead of him, really only just because of the injury. Now, he's expected to be ready to go for week number one. The team is treating things cautiously. That makes sense. They're doing everything correct. But what happens if he comes back week one and maybe they're just easing him in, right? And then if he magically ends up getting banged up again, maybe this is something that lingers and makes him miss a bunch of games. Maybe he's not as explosive early on. There are reasons to worry. Now, am I in full-on panic mode? Not yet, but I definitely think you should be moving Jameer Gibbs down and I would be taking Jonathan Taylor. Now, some people might be nervous to take JT because obviously he missed the start of last season. There was the contract negotiations and there was also the injury. But when this guy was playing last year, he looked like his old self, right? When he got into the groove, 27 fantasy points, 17 fantasy points, 17, 21, 14. Sure, there was a down game or two there, but this guy can still play ball. I get that some people are worried about Anthony Richardson vulturing some of his touchdowns, vulturing some of his rushing opportunities, but we saw Zach Moss go nuclear. Nuclear when Anthony Richardson was healthy, and I still believe that Jonathan Taylor is one of the best running backs in the NFL. You ask people prior to last season, before the injury, 
Where do you rank Jonathan Taylor amongst running backs? Basically, everyone would call him a unanimous top five running back. But now just because of one down season, people are ready to full on panic on him. And I'm definitely not panicking yet. After Jonathan Taylor, Jameer Gibbs, Marvin Harrison Jr., Kyron Williams, Derrick Henry, Devontae Adams, Isaiah Pacheco, Brandon Ayuk, Chris Olave, Travis Etienne, Drizzy Drake, London, Pat Mahomes, Joe Mixon, Josh Allen, Devon A. Chan, Michael Pittman Jr., Sam Laporta, Mike Evans, Jalen Hurts, Josh Jacobs, and Cooper Cup. None of those picks between... My last pick at the 202 and my now pick at pick 35 at the 3.11 feel all that crazy. Now, I get you might want to move around the order of these players. And if you guys watch my video from earlier today where I broke down how I believe the first three rounds are going to play out of fantasy football drafts, mixing ADP with my rankings. Sure, things are different. But these are the players that are going to get taken in that range. Laporta falling to the 3.06 definitely feels like a lot better value than taking Kelsey with the first pick in the second round. So right now we have Jonathan Taylor, JT, and Garrett Wilson, two guys that I could see finishing top five at their position. I think that Jonathan Taylor has a better chance of being the running back one compared to Garrett Wilson being the wide receiver number one. So looking at the quarterbacks, obviously the big three are gone. J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick get it, haha. <laughs> but the real three would be Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, and Pat Mahomes. So we're left with Lamar, Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud at tight end. The big two are gone. McBride and Andrews are still available. At running back, Rashad with two A's white, James Cook. Alvin Kamara, Jalen Waddle. So looking at the team next to us, they took a wide receiver and a tight end. So by the time we get to pick again, very likely that most likely at least one running back, I would basically bet my life if this was a real person that one running back would go. Now, since it's a computer, I wouldn't want to bet my whole life on that, right? It ain't worth it. But what I'm saying is in a real draft, I would be 100% if I wasn't drafting up against artificial intelligence here, drafting up against Karen from fucking SpongeBob. I know for sure that one running back is going to go. So if I feel like one of these running backs by far better than the other, I would just take them here and then wait until the next round to see what I want to do at wide receiver. Now, what I'll tell you is if this league was a triple wide receiver league or a two wide receivers, two flex league. I would probably just be fine drafting three receivers in a row and then kind of potentially deep diving into the potential dead zone at running back or just taking a tight end or quarterback in the sixth round. But here, since this is a more basic two running back, two wide receiver, one flex, I do want to get the running back that I like better. And that is James Cook. I like James Cook a lot. This is a guy that has been iced out of touchdowns for his first two years in the NFL. And I think the touchdowns are going to finally come his way. James Cook is a very productive pass catching back. And if you look at his stats last season, once the team pushed more to him, once they fired their offensive coordinator, he did wonders. I get he kind of shit the bed through the last three games of the season, but I don't really feel like there's too much competition around James Cook that's going to really take away too much value. The only guy I got to really worry about vulturing him is Josh Allen, and I do like James Cook more than Rashad White. It's a tear break for me. The reason why I don't like Rashad White as much is just basically due to the efficiency. Rashad White was not very effective last year. Now, maybe he is more effective this season with a better offensive line. Maybe the play calling changes end up fixing things, but I definitely like James Cook ahead of Rashad White, who we could have gotten in the second round or in the next round, the fourth round, with our second pick in the somewhat back-to-back -back here, our fourth overall pick, but you get what I mean. It feels like you're picking back to back here when you're on this edge, but obviously you got to worry about the other team next to you. And that's why it's very important that you're looking at the draft board. If your league has a draft board or you look at the other teams going on around you while you're drafting. So you don't make a decision that is wrong. Like for instance, if I wanted a tight end here at the fourth pick, and then I just took one at the 3.11 when this team already has Kelsey, that would be foolish because there's no fucking way that they're going to take another tight end. So after Cook, Stefan Diggs, and Rashad with two A's white. So right now, we've got JT, James Cook, and Garrett Wilson. At wide receiver, we got Jalen Waddle, Nico Collins, Debo Samuel, DJ Moore. Now in terms of my rankings, I have DJ Moore, Nico Collins, and Waddle as the best players available. And we typically fall into a range where we're looking at wide receivers in this range a bunch in these mock drafts. Now, if I am in 10 different leagues, I'm probably taking Waddle three times 
taking more three times, taking Nico three times, and just rolling the dice maybe with DK Metcalf or Debo Samuel the other time, right? But since this is just one mock draft and we try to do things differently every single time, I believe in our last mock, we took either DJ Moore or Nico Collins. So we'll go with Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle currently dealing with a minor injury. Nothing has really been disclosed regarding Jalen Waddle, which feels a little bit confusing. Like I haven't really read anything, though, that is super negative. So since I haven't seen anything, that would make me incredibly nervous to draft Jalen Waddle. I think he is the pick here. Now you could go with Trey McBride, but we have taken Trey McBride a bunch recently in the mock drafts. And again, I believe you guys want to be trying different things every single time you do a mock draft. Like for instance, if you're like, okay, I'm going into my 2024 fantasy football draft. I'm the 11th pick in a 12 team PPR league. Take three fucking receivers in a row instantly. Right. And then do another one where you take three running backs or a running back, two receivers, two running backs, one receiver. Right. Try different things. Take the early quarterback. See how you like your teams. And that's also going to help you be very hyper aware when things start to go wrong. And maybe only mock drafted once. And oh, my God, Nick Cook isn't there for me in the third round. What do I do? And then you just start to panic. If you do a bunch of mock drafts, you won't be panicking as much. So we're going to go with Jalen Waddle away, Waddle Waddle, till the very next day. I get that he had a down season last year, but to me, it feels pretty clear that they are going to bounce back, I, or he is going to bounce back. I don't really think the team is going to be as hyper fixated on getting Tyreek Hill to 2,000 yards like they were last season. And I thought maybe that was Fugazi, Awazi, and Awuzi, but Tua Tunga Vailoa himself admitted in that Dan Lebetard interview that that was the case. So after Jalen Waddle, Debo Sam. Samuel, Nico Collins, DK Metcalf, Lamar Jackson, DJ Moore, Alvin Kamara, Kenneth Walker, Devontae Smith, Mark Andrews, Trey McBride, Amari Cooper, Malik Neighbors, Ramondre Stevenson, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Aaron Jones, George Kittle, uh, Dalton Kincaid, Kyle Pitts, Tank Dell. So we saw a bit of a tight end run here. That typically happens in the first, I'd say in the second or the third round, you're going to see Laporta and Kelsey be gone. Then typically there's a couple of pick lull and then Andrews and then McBride, and then typically in like the fifth or sixth round, at some point, people start to panic. They start to get the fucking shakes, and they just start drafting tight ends at a rapid speed. So looking at the tight end still available, Ingram, I'm fine with Ingram. I don't like him that much as much as I used to, so I'm just not going to take him at the 59th overall pick. I'm not going to take him the next round either because I think that would definitely be a reach. I'd be more interested in going with a quarterback here. But we are going to go with a wide receiver here. And we are going to go ahead and go with my highest ranked wide receiver. And that's a debate between Flowers, Higgins, Kirk, Pickens, Rice, Godwin. Now, I moved Rashi Rice up my rankings in a dramatic fashion. He was buried in like the 36-ish range. And then after I realized, hey, he's probably not going to get suspended, I bumped him up a little bit. Then the other night... I said, you know what? To hell with it. If Rashi Rice is the number one receiver on the Chiefs, he needs to be ranked way higher. So I bumped him up. I think he might even be ranked inside the top 24 at this point. But we don't need to necessarily take him here because he could come back to us in the next round, more than likely will. So we'll just go with T. Higgins here. We're getting Waddle and Higgins, two guys that definitely underperformed last season. But T. Higgins was at mercy of the fact that the team was just pretty bad because Joe Burrow was banged up entering into the year. Then he got healthy. Everything's going well. And then bada bing, bada boom, step inside the room. He ends up getting whacked out in that Ravens game like fucking pussy in the Sopranos. So that wasn't great. Higgins had that one solid game with the dude who has a super hot girlfriend playing quarterback. He had two big games, 22 and 25 points. The guy can still play. And I frankly think, you know, like if Jamar Chase wasn't on that team, we'd be talking about T. Higgins as a first round pick unanimous. So I'm going to go with T. Higgins here. And then we are going to match him with Rashi Rice. I know, Nick, you have, oh, Gary Wilson's on by week 12 and T. Higgins is week 12. Rice by week six, Waddle by week six. Don't worry at all about by weeks. I know people get in their head so heavily about that, but by week six, your team's going to look different. By week 12, your team probably looks drastically different because things happen. Players get hurt. Knock on wood. We don't refer injuries. Players suck, right? Maybe a guy you drafted, especially like later that's chilling on your bench. He might be a straight up dunce, a straight up zero, a donut doing nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and just... Assume that my team's going to look differently by then and not really worry. Plus, 
I'm going to draft more receivers, more running backs. So there'll always be someone to play in my flex and my receiver spots. And I'm going to find people off the waiver wire as well. The draft isn't the be all end all. Obviously, you don't want to have a terrible draft. You don't want to screw everything up by drafting incorrectly. But the waiver wire is also very crucial in taking down a fantasy football championship. And I fully acknowledge clicking Rashi Rice there instead of a quarterback or a tight end could end up being that we get screwed at quarterback. We get screwed at tight end. But again, that's why you do the practices. But hey, if things go wrong, right? If things go awry, I know not to panic when things come back around. So after Rashi Rice, Kyler Murray, James Conner, Calvin Ridley, David Montgomery, DeAndre Swift, Evan Ingram, Christian Kirk, Najee Harris, George Pickens, Raheem Mostert, Keenan Allen, Dak Prescott, Terry McLaurin, Chris Godwin, Jaden Riley Reed, Jordan Love, Zamir White, Brian Robinson, Brock Purdy, and Deontay Johnson. I moved Najee up the rankings because with the injury of Jalen Warren, and that feels like the kind of injury where Jalen Warren could be missing multiple games. He's dealing with a hamstring injury. Could miss a few weeks. The opener's in question. And like, while I think Jalen Warren's better than Najee, like that could be the the dagger in the back of Jalen Warren. Shout out to Sansa. No, not Sansa. What's the little Arya Stark? Shout out Arya Stark. Man, like Rashi, not Rashi Rice. Um, Jalen Warren really felt like a really good pick. And now I'm starting to really question things. I did just move myself to the top right so that you guys can see the bench a little bit better. Let me know in the comments. Do you guys like the camera up here? or down at the bottom better. Now, I know it does block the bench slightly, but I'm not sure how many people are really worried about that because I do throw the team on the screen, like the uh, the, the draft board. So let me know in the comment section. I don't think anyone gives a rat's ass because no one mentioned it when I switched it in the last video. So we got iced out at quarterback. We got absolutely raw dogged here. I kind of thought maybe we'd get Jordan Love back here. Based on the draft, everyone is a quarterback except for us. Now, in your at-home league, if you know your friends, you know your league mates, you know Jim from the office, you know Michael, um, shit, what are all the guys' names? I haven't watched the show in a while. Stanley, shout out Stanley. Shout out the dude from The Hangover, too, that's in that Deftones band or whatever the fuck, the acoustic group, whatever. Um, yeah, so you gotta know your league mates. That's what I was trying to say. If you know your league mates, you've been in a league for a while, you might know that there's some some idiots in your, your league, some straight up buffoons, some window lickers that might end up drafting two quarterbacks by the time you want to get your first. So you kind of have to know your league based on that. Based upon the AI, I think I should be good to go in the ninth round to pick my first quarterback. And at this range, we're probably going to draft two quarterbacks because we don't want to get fully iced out at the quarterback. And we, we already got iced out, so we kind of want to just take two upside shots. Let's look at the tight ends here. Team around us, Kelsey, they got Kelsey. So we're going to wait. And then in the next round, take Jake Ferguson. Even if Jake Ferguson is technically a reach in that range, he is 100% not coming back to us. So we're either going running back or wide receiver here. Jalen Warren moved enough down my rankings to where I wouldn't really feel extremely confident taking him here due to the hamstring injury. Now, this is one of those things where if by the end of August, maybe you're doing your draft Labor Day weekend, you're doing your draft like the Tuesday or the Wednesday before the season, we have way more information than you can do with that as you please. Right now with the information we have, I would kind of just stay away from Jalen Warren. So we are going to go running back here and we're going to go with Javante. Now I know in week number two of preseason, we saw a lot more of Jaleel McLaughlin. I do think Jaleel McLaughlin will be the running back too, but I think Javante has a pretty clear lead as the lead back on this team. So we're going to go ahead and go with Javante Williams. We've talked about him a bunch this offseason, really sucked the guy dry metaphorically in a lot of these videos just because of the fact that Sean Payton is a great uh, running back kind of guru. He's always grooming out these running backs, no ditty, that end up being very productive for fantasy. So we're going to go with Javante Williams here. He was using Javante heavily last year when Javante was coming off that serious injury, and now he's another year removed from it. I like the upside of him. So now we're going to go with Jake Ferguson. We do take Jake Ferguson a lot, but I'm being honest with you with the fact that Brower, Bowers, Brock Bowser, is uh, in Peach's castle, and he's actually hurt. And the fact that the tight ends feel a little bit suspect after Jake Ferguson, in my opinion, I would rather just take him here. Even though we did take him in the last video, I do apologize if you guys like different players every single time. But if I really like a guy, especially like in the eighth, ninth round, 
I'm more at the more likely to take them at a higher clip, right? Where early on when we discussed, hey, if you really like Waddle and you're just de deciding between Nico, Waddle, DJ Moore, right? Take a, if you're in ten different leagues, take take a variety of them, right? Don't just take Waddle every single time or Nico every single time. But in the eighth round, when you're further down the draft, you can take more risks, more stands like that. But obviously, if you draft Jake Ferguson in 10 drafts and Jake Ferguson goes down, then you're just hunting the waiver wire in every single league. And that would suck. That would really suck. But again, we're not rooting for injury. Knock on wood. They're saying he might have been available two rounds from now. If I'm keeping it a buck 50, I don't think that was going to happen. But he was back at the 9.11. We'll never forget that after Jake Ferguson, Hollywood Brown, Tony Pollard, 49ers defense, the Bears defense, 9-inch Nicholas Chubb, the Ravens, Adunze, who I'm starting to get real hot and bothered by, baby. I love Rome Adunze. I already liked him. But uh, Keenan Allen's fat ass is not going to stop Rome Adunze from touching the field. JSN, Dallas Cowboys, don't take a defense this early. Bengals, Eckler, Watson, Jalen Warren, Xavier Worthy, DeAndre Hopkins, Zach Moss, Keon Coleman, Tajay Spears, Devin Singletary, and I want a bad bitch. Jordan Addison, right? Now, the ninth round would be my cutoff point in my at-home league to take a quarterback. Because I know, even though my friends have access to all my videos, even though they could just pay $7.50 to get my rankings on the Patreon, even though they can ask me questions before the draft, and typically I give them sound advice, I'm not leading them astray, run amok, right? I They they still do stupid shit. Like, the, there's still guys, they'll take two defenses, take two kickers, just, like, take Mahomes in the second round and then go ahead and draft Tua in the, in the ninth round, even though you're never going to play Tua because you have Mahomes, right? They still do it anyways. They don't give a singular fuck. Now, if we look at the quarterbacks here, I know my at-home league, I might get sniped by the time. Maybe not the 10th round, right? Maybe I would feel confident because this guy has Burrow. So I probably would push it one more round, which I'm going to do. But even then, you know, you never know. Like, if you know the people in your league, it's way easier because you can kind of pick up on their tendencies. Like, I know some of my friends, the, the, the two kicker guys, I know the... The uh, two quarterback early guys, like I know the people that just do stupid shit, so it's a lot easier to figure out. But if you're newer to your league, you don't know your league mates, um, make sure if you're just joining the league and the league has a history, you go in the history, you scroll back, you read through things because you can read people like a book in your draft if you do that. Because obviously strategy changes over time, right? If you look at a draft from 10 years ago, people adjust, right? But some people are still stuck in their old ways, drafting three running backs in a row, fantasy counselor style. So... We don't need a tight end. We're going to either go running back or wide receiver. I feel pretty comfortable with Taylor, Hook, and Javante, though I do understand that there is a big gap at the running back position after this selection where there kind of is less of a gap at wide receiver. There's a lot of wide receivers I like in this range. So I'm going to go running back between Chase Brown, Jerome Ford, Gus Bus would be the pick here. We haven't taken Gus Edwards in any of the mock drafts recently, so we will take him here. Gus Edwards could be the lead back in LA. It might be Dobbins, but it really feels like a 50-50 type of debate here on one or the other. The offensive coordinator, Greg Roman, uh, cousin of Nico, obviously. Roman, Nico, get it? Ha ha ha. We always talk about cousin Nico. Let's go bowling. If you get it, you get it. But Gus Edwards could be the lead back on a very run heavy Chargers team and could be the goal line back. So I kind of like that. Zeke, uh, I like Zeke, but again, it's starting to feel like Dowdle's going to be more and more likely the running back one on this team quicker than I thought. Blake Corum, and now we're going to take a quarterback. Now, we actually don't have anyone to stack here besides Tua with Waddle. We can stack Tua and Waddle and get that extra upside. And that's ultimately going to be the tiebreaker here. I might rank Daniels or Caleb ahead of him. They're all in a very close range. But because of the stacking upside, I'm going to take Tua Tonga Vailoa. Now, the reason why we stack is because on a week to week basis, you are making less bets when you stack. Now, do you have to stack? No. What I mean by that is if Waddle has a great game, Tua's going to have a good game. At least a good game could have a great game, right? Now, I understand from a week-to-week -week standpoint, sure, if Tua shits the bed, then you also have Waddle shitting the bed, but we're looking for upside. We're not looking to just go safe at every single position. You're not going to win your league just wrapping your team in bubble wrap. So we're going to go with Tua, Tonga Vailoa at that pick, and we're going to get another quarterback to match with Tua. Now, it's going to be a little bit frustrating some weeks where 
you have Tua and you don't know who to start because maybe you drafted Caleb Williams and now Caleb Williams is amazing, but that's a problem for down the line. Maybe we trade one of them off of our team if one of them ends up being a superstar. After Tua, Lad McConkey, Trey Benson, Jerome Ford F-150, Chase Brown, Zach Charbonnet, Portland Sutton, Jamison Williams, Tyler Lockett, Brian Robinson, or Brian, Rob- Brian, Brian Thomas Jr., Chuba Hubbard, Khalil Shakira, Shakira, J.K. Dobbins, David Njoku, Dallas Goddard, Tyler Algier, Curtis Samuel, Mike Williams, Jerry Judy, Romeo Dobbs, and Brock Bowers. And they make Brock Bowers in this picture. It looks like he has a really fucked up hairline, but it's just because of the picture that they chose for him. Because, like, the sun is going there, and it looks like he's got one of those hairlines where it's like he's got the sides, but the whole middle, it's like a reverse mohawk. That's what it kind of looks like. Maybe no one noticed that. Maybe I'm just fucking stupid and I just noticed dumb things like that. But now, now is when you'd look at buy, right? Caleb have the same buy as Tua. That would be important. Does Jaden Daniels have the same buy? Does Goff have the same buy? That's where you would look at the buy weeks. Again, the reason why I'm going to take them here and not in the next round is because I don't know if the other person would take a quarterback. Like in my at-home league, it's very probable that that could happen. Again, you got to know your league. So buy six for Tua. None of these guys have a buy interference here. So let's go with Caleb. I think he looked really good. I think he looked better than Daniels did in preseason. And Daniels looked good as well. Uh, Daniels probably has more rushing upside, but Caleb also has rushing upside. He has the better weapons around him. So we'll go with Caleb Williams. Now we need to get another wide receiver because we're going to want to be starting two running backs every week, but three wide receivers. So you'd rather have five wide receivers on the bench compared to just our five, not on the bench, but one, two, three, four total we have right now. One on the bench. We, we want two on our bench since we went with the quarterback. We're not taking a backup tight end because we already invested in in Ferguson. I get it wasn't a top five round pick, but I'm expecting Ferguson to be good. I don't expect I'm going to need to rotate the tight end position weekly. So I'm just sticking with one in Ferguson with one shout out Roman Reigns. So we're going to go wide receiver here, and we're just going to click on the highest upside pick here. I'm starting to like Michael Wilson a little bit in Arizona as the number two wide receiver. Dotson's looking a little bit more promising. Uh, Donnie Mitchell. There's a lot of solid guys down here as you scroll deeper and deeper. Like if maybe, just maybe, Ayuk gets traded, which I don't even think is going to happen at this point, then Ricky Parsal would be a great pick. But we're going to go here and take a Donnie Mitchell, the Colts number two receiver, seemingly with Josh Downs hurt. Again, he's a rookie, might take take some time to develop, and we already have these hammer pieces at the wide receiver like Wilson, Waddle, Rice, Higgins, guys that are already ready. We've seen them in the league for a couple years. We know how good they are, so I'm not really too worried about drafting like some super safe wide receiver like Brandon Cooks, who might do diddly squat for the whole season, but he's fine for the first couple of weeks, right? We don't need to start him. So now we're going to go ahead and draft our kicker and our defense. We're going to go with Jason Sanders of the Dolphins as our starting kicker. And then for defense, what you want to do is draft a defense going up against a not so hot offense in week number one. The defense is, in my opinion, a very important position in fantasy football if your league has defenses, but you don't need to draft them super highly because you're going to cycle them in weekly. Now, you're going to be able to find defenses at times that have two, three good weeks in a row. Sometimes they just have one good week and you want to be cycling them in and out. Now, if you are in a league that has a restriction on the amount of waiver wire moves you can make at the defensive position, then then you want to be really looking for the guys with two, three good weeks in a row or maybe potentially trying to just, if you get a good defense and they're kind of on a roll, then you might want to just keep them for a little bit longer. But in most leagues, there's no fucking waiver wire restriction. They're not putting your cock in a, what is that? Those called like a, it's like a chamber. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't know what those things are called. Cause I'm not a sicko. I don't got one of those, but you guys know what I mean. A chastity belt. That's what we're talking about here. Getting a little bit perverted here. Nick at night, 30 minutes in it's 1230 AM. The, the night before an 820 August, like you guys watching this on 820, probably at like 5 p.m. So, you know, Nick at night style here. Make sure you guys check out the earlier video. So now for defense, you want to draft a defense based upon their week one matchup, potentially their week two matchup as well. I will have a video out before most of you guys actually draft on which defense is draft based upon week number one. We do talk about it in a lot of these mock draft videos, so you guys should have a good idea. 
at this point of my targets. I like the Bengals a lot because they're going up against the Patriots in week one. But we're going to go with the Saints going up against the Panthers because the Bengals are already off the board. I actually like the uh, Panthers this year. I think they're going to be a lot better than people think. But in week one, I think they're going to have some things to iron out. So Tua is our quarterback. We got Jonathan Taylor, James Cook. Receivers are Garrett Wilson and Jalen Waddle. Tight end, Jake Ferguson. Flex, Tee Higgins, Saints, Jason Sanders, Rashi Rice, Javante Williams, Gus Edwards, Caleb Williams, and Adani Mitchell. I la 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 love this team. It ma 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 makes me happy. Shout out Simple Jack. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below like it owes you some money. Hit that like button whether you ever are new to the channel or not. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great rest of guys' day. Check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen it already. Have a great one. And as always, good boy.